In this video, we are going to calculate confidence interval for a population proportion. Alright, let's have our first example. Amira Labs tried a new vaccine on 126 randomly selected individuals. From the experiment, it was determined that 78 of them developed immunity. Calculate a 95% confidence interval for the proportion P of individuals in the population for whom the vaccine would help. Okay, so the first step here is to calculate the sample proportion, okay? Because we don't know what the population proportion is, but we know what the sample proportion is. Okay, so let's calculate. So step one is to calculate the sample proportion okay sample proportion all right and this is very straightforward so these the population proportion p hat okay so that's the notation for sample proportion p hat equals um, the number of people who developed immunity from the sample. So it has 78, okay? So 78 out of 126. So this is the sample proportion, okay? So it's a fraction of the uh, total number of randomly selected individuals, okay? 78 out of 126. And we can also write this as a decimal approximation as 0 0.6190. Okay. All right. Step number two is to calculate the standard error. Okay. So let's calculate the standard error. All right. So the formula for standard error is, okay, it is the square root of P times one minus P over N. Okay, so that's the formula for standard error. P is the sample proportion, I should say P hat, P hat, and N is the uh, sample size. All right, let's compute. So that will be square root of P hat is 0 0.6190 times one minus 0 0.6190 over n which is 126 okay so then that will give us approximately approximately uh, 0 0.0433 okay Step number three is to um, identify the associated z-score, okay? So the z-score um, for the 95% confidence interval. Z-score for 95% confidence interval. And we know what that is. Okay, just look at the table, the z-score for that will be 1.96. Alright. Step 4 is we create, we calculate the confidence interval. So step 4 is to calculate the confidence interval. The formula for that is uh, p hat plus or minus z-score 
times the standard error. Alright, so let's plug in our values. We know the value of p hat is 0 0.6190 plus or minus z score is 1.96 times the standard error which is 0 0.0433. Okay, so this is going to be 0 0.6190 plus or minus 0 0.0849. Okay, so this is going to be our confidence interval. Okay, but uh, we can write this in interval notation because after all we're talking about interval. So in interval notation, this will be, so first we calculate 0 0.6180 minus 0 0.0849, that will give us 0 0.5342. And then we calculate 0 0.6190 plus 0 0.0849, that will give us 0 0.7038. And that is the 95% confidence interval. So, to conclude, we say that we are 95% confident that the proportion of the respondents who will develop immunity is between about 53.42% to 70.38%. Alright, let's have another example. Before a congressional election, a poll was conducted. Out of 1,285 randomly selected voters interviewed, 599 said that they would vote for candidate A, and 676 said that they would vote for candidate B. Construct a 99% confidence interval for the proportion P of voters who would vote for candidate A. All right, so don't get confused here because we have two numbers. We have 599, that's for candidate A, and we have 676 for candidate B. I want you to look at the question. The question is, construct a 99% confidence interval for the proportion P of voters who would vote for candidate A. Okay, so this is asking for candidate A, so we're going to look at the value for candidate A. Okay, so step number one, find the sample proportion P hat. Okay, so P hat is going to be 599, again that's for candidate A, over 1,285. And uh, we can approximate that to 0 0.4661 all right step number two we're going to calculate the standard error so again the formula for standard error is the square root of uh, p hat times one minus p hat over the sample size okay so this will give us the square root of p, which is 0 0.4661 times 1 minus 0 0.4661 all over n, which is 1285. Okay, so this will give us 0 0.0139. Okay. So that's going to be our standard error. Step number three, we're going to identify the z-score for 99%. Okay, so we're going to change this into a 99% confidence interval. The z-score for that, just look at our table, the z-score for that is 2.57. Okay. And then finally, for our confidence interval, we're going to use the same formula, p hat 
plus or minus z score times standard error okay our p hat is 0 0.4661 plus or minus z score which is 2.575 times standard error 0 0.0139 so this is going to be 0 0.4661 plus or minus um, 0 0.0358. All right. So this is our confidence interval, and so let's get let's uh, write this in interval notation. So this is going to be 0 0.4661 minus 0 0.0358. That's equal to 0 0.4303. And then for our upper bound, so 0 0.4661 plus 0 0.0358. That's 0 0.5019. Okay. So this is our confidence interval. 99% confidence interval. Uh, for the proportion P of voters who would vote for candidate A. So that's about 43.03% to 50.19%. Let's have another example. In a random sample of 340 students, 178 of the 210 females and 90 out of the 130 males passed statistics and probability on their first take. Construct a 90% confidence interval for the population proportion of students who passed the subject. Alright, so step number one is to find the sample proportion of the students, let me underline this, students who passed the subject. Okay. So don't get confused here. We have two numbers, 178 and 90. Okay, But remember, this is asking for the students. The 178 is for the females and 90 is for the males. Okay, But students means male and female, both male and female. So what that means is we're just going to add the numbers. So we're going to add 178, this is for the male, uh, for the female, plus 90 for the male. Divided by the total number of students, which is 340. Okay. And so, if we compute, we're going to get approximately 0 0.788. Two. For the standard error, it's just going to be the same formula. So it's just going to plug in the values. Um, so for the for p hat, we get 0 0.7882 times 1 minus 0 0.7882 all over 340. Okay, so this will give us approximately 0 0.0222. For the z-score, we need the z-score for a 90% confidence interval. So let's replace that. So that's 90%. And the z-score for that is 1.6. Five. Step 4, we compute the confidence interval. So just going to plug in the values, 0 0.7882, that's for p hat, plus or minus, the z-score is 1.645 times, the standard error is 0 0.0222. So that would be 0 0.7882 plus or minus. 
zero point zero three six five. That's our confidence interval. We're gonna write that in interval notation. So that will be zero point seven five one seven. So basically that's zero point seven eight eight two minus zero point zero three six five. And so for the upper bound, 0 0.7882 plus 0 0.0365, that gives us 0 0.8247. That's it. So that's the 90% confidence interval for the proportion of students who passed the statistics and probability subject. So that's about... 75.17% um, to 82.47%. Uh,